It is the podcast. And it's the podcast. Why? Why? You just I don't know, but why? Like, well. when do you know the song's going to come out? You know, I just, it comes out in my heart. <laughs> and then it comes out of your mouth. It comes out of my mouth. Do you do this at home for tomorrow? Do you do this all the time? <laughs> really? Yeah. Is he concerned as I am? Sometimes Arch says words to me, and just for me to, like, know that I listened but not truly listened, I'll be like, where are my lunchbox and my pants? You know what that's called? auditory echoing and it's a way that people pretend they were listening mm-hmm. but your brain can actually recall things you weren't listening to and then you prove that you were listening which you weren't by repeating it back yeah. to them but it's an auditory echo with no process that's what art says he says why do you always why do you always repeat because you're proving that you're <laughs> listening because you weren't <laughs> he there so when you ask your partner did you even hear what i said and they repeat back to you the most recent did sentence you even hear what i said <laughs> Fair, fair. Okay, Corey, it is the podcast. We do sell people on welcome. (laughs) Welcome to the Baking It Down podcast with your host, the twins, Corey and Heather. If you're just hearing this for the first time, welcome on this wild road. This is so loud. Oh. Welcome on this wild (laughs) adventure. (laughs) We are actually a part of a group called Sugar Cookie Marketing Group on Facebook. We're almost 41,000 bakers strong in there. So if you want to join us, join us. Just make sure to answer the entry questions. If you put that you heard about us on the podcast, you get to jump the line. I love how somebody could listen to the podcast and realize like group growth in accordance to how often we say, well, now we got 39,000. <laughs> you're like, almost 41,000. <laughs> yeah, it's because I actually not 41,000, but almost. <laughs> but each week we've come to you with a little bit of, you know, I want to call it a marketing nugget, but it could be a marketing know how. <laughs> <laughs> Can you come up with a third <laughs> one? Depending on what week it is. <laughs> third option. <laughs> and this week is a t- complicated topic but we are making it uncomplicated the words the acronym seo people are already zoned out they are what, do, what did we just over. say and they're like yes yeah SEO. <laughs> SEO. <laughs> so Corey and i started in business in the niche of seo it turns out i didn't realize what a hellhole it was <laughs> specifically local seo Right. So there's many iterations of SEO. And we're just going to break this down kind of in layman's terms to take away the oogie boogie. The oogly boogly (laughs) out of it. So SEO, simple terms, search engine optimization. So when somebody says they're an SEO, they're a search engine optimizer. So break down first, what is SE? Search engine. (laughs) Think of search engine. Uh, The biggest one being Google, which controls about 90% of the internet. Okay. But Bing, now that it's partnered with AI, it's taking back market share. But if you can search on it, it's considered a search engine. So a lot of times we default to thinking Google is the search engine. But essentially, Facebook's a search engine, Yelp's a search engine. There is a search feature on these websites. They are search engines. So search engines are just anything you can search for a business, wink, wink, on. Right. Even Google Maps is a subcategory of Google Search, and it is its own separate search engine. There are some relations between Google Search and Google Maps Search, but both are search engines. Right. When Heather broke down on Saturday, nine, two and a half hours. Okay, not crying. The car did. (laughs) (laughs) I used Google Maps to find something to do while I I, waited for it. Okay. Aside, my car broke down, plus its own little 30-year-old heart. Two and a half hours from home on a Saturday where every tow truck driver is taking their daughters to prom, except for one guy named Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Guy. Listen, I'm going to tell you from my perspective. I, trying to have a, an awesome mother-son date, lunch with my Not kiddo. Not on my watch. <laughs> get a text message, my car is broken down. That's all it says. It doesn't say, can you help me? It doesn't say, like, you know, it's on I fire. I just knew all I needed to send you was a bat signal. You'd see it and know exact Within that one sentence, because Corey and I are basically married and she's my husband and I'm her husband, is with you're going to immediately wrap up what you're doing. You understand that I'm probably far away from home. Otherwise, I wouldn't Listen, have called. And did you not understand think it was issue. that far. It did not I think. knew. I knew there was a problem. <laughs> it was that far. Two and a half hours south. And no tow truck driver take it home to two and a half hours yeah. north. Heather, this is, I'm telling my I'm perspective. I'm mad about him. Go you ahead. Shush. Go ahead. Go I get, ahead. I get a text message. My car broke down. So I was like, instantly, do you need a ride? Maybe 10 minutes later. I'm already getting the food to go. Heather said, false alarm. I've got someone to tow it. 
So I'm like, I'm getting ready to tell, like, Scott at California. Please, please no. There's 20% battery life left on my phone, and I do not have an external charger. <laughs> I was like, oh, we could have eaten it here, but I've already gotten it to go. We'll just take it to go. Which is miserable. And I understand. I'm not a to-go. I want to eat. Yeah. I want to see I, the Diet Coke refill machine. of the eating out, I know. half of it is to take a I seat know. in that place. I know. Free AC. Free AC. Free, Free Diet Coke I refills. know. I know. So I'm heading home. You don't have to clean up. Kind of. This is uh, California. Yeah. You do have to take yourself <laughs> to the trash. <laughs> so I'm like on the way home and I was like, oh, well, I didn't get any food. I bet California Tortilla is like, we would love to shut down all our locations and just call it a day. But they're like, the but there's one minute. <laughs> just keeps generating income. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'll get a giant, not road worthy smoothie. That was a risky click anyway. Because I you, didn't – I was trying to kind of understand that, that there point. is a proxy issue that may or may not have been solved. It was a solved. straight shot from Smoothie King to home. One giant road, zero traffic lights. But probably 25 minutes. So even there, risky click. Yeah, but I would be drinking it during that time. Your belly. Yeah. It says, we'll, just, <laughs> we'll tell you where you'll be stopping. So then I'm like on the way Was home. it a fruit smoothie? It was a pineapple syrup. Oh, okay. From mm -hmm. Tropical Smoothie Cafe? Smoothie King. Smoothie King. <laughs> So I get this smoothie that was delectable. Delectable. I believe it because I you it's, ordered one for me. I know. The thing comes in a gallon. It does. <laughs> it is Just amazing. Just imagine a gallon. I'm <laughs> sipping this gallon. Then I get a message from Heather. The tow truck canceled. I will need a ride. I'm like, all right. Arch, let me kick you out of the car <laughs> while it's rolling. <laughs> Take this bag of California tortilla and eat it. <laughs> so I grab a charger for a phone that's an Android. That Thank you. An archaic thing. I can't call. believe I still had a charger. <laughs> Throw some cash in USB -C, my pocket. USB-C. Now all iPhones will be USB-C. Thank you. I know. I can't wait to go. Uh, <laughs> and I start going in the general direction. Which is any place half, not where we live. At any away. direction. So this is Heather. I said, you got to give me an address. This this car only, it's a it's a navigation system only. It can't, I can't okay, say I, I wanna, direction. I want to also, now I'm going to insert my side. Corey's making it sound like I'm doing it like hopscotch on the side of the I interstate. I feel like you are. I am, I am calling the, what do you call the insurance. They're saying we can't find anybody. I'm calling the tow people. They're saying it, you're, people are stopping on the side of the road. The VDOT guy, we're best friends. Okay. I'm driving. It is. In, it, and I'm, I'm 20%, south. 19%, 18%. South is all I can tell you. Back in the wind, blowing south. Yep. In my car that I did not want to put my on. <laughs> That's on me. So then Heather's like, okay, pick me up at this grooming place. <laughs> That's the closest business to where I was. Yeah, so on the I was side. like, okay, I'll head towards the green place. Then no, okay, they've canceled that tow. Head to this new place. Okay, now I'm I'm heading to that place. Doing this all while driving. And I, I want you to know that I am I am got an APB and I'm asking people, is there anyone in Richmond, which is halfway north, not the full way, mm -hmm. that I can just get this car mm -hmm. shipped to and parked? I'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. I just need a location. So that's why the addresses are frantically changing. And at this point, seventy percent battery left, and the car has now. The battery has died. The for battery this. has died. So we so have Heather an engine issue and a battery problem. Her last known coordinates. I said if I croak, well, just start here, the, man. Like the equator was Start being from the old broken down car and work your way to the woods. <laughs> so if you don't know, Android and Apple hate each other. The mm. phones do mm. not like each other. Oh, great. So Heather sends me this coordinates. And it was like, yeah, we can only open that in Google Maps. Mm -hmm. And my you should have it like, down. No, oh, come you. on, man. No, it's on there, but my phone doesn't want to, to use it. You accidentally did that forever. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there. So then it was like, you know what? We think she could be down this road. But we're, she's probably dead. We're That's just what? going to send you towards the there. I'm on the side of the road with this ancient car that a bunch of people like to look uh. at. And they're honking with thumbs up. Like, it's not a thumbs up situation. I can tell you that's one one car I hate looking at now. <laughs> that makes two of us. <laughs> Me, you, and the tow guy. So Heather finally finds this last minute tow guy. Bless his soul. Bless his soul. Could have been at home with his family on a his, Saturday. He has two daughters going to prom on Saturday. But the man's like, got to pay for these prom dresses. Let me cart this old car and the sweaty lady. He said, I'm so sorry I don't have air conditioning. I said, sir, your vehicle moves. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a, it's a <laughs> So Heather gets towed to his shop. I don't know how this worked out, but wherever the shop was, Heather was one hour away from it. Mm -hmm. And I'm one hour there already, sitting. With the waiting. car on the trailer of the tow truck, it grew from an hour at a normal speed to an extremely Slow hour and uh, 45 minutes. <laughs> so this little town, it wasn't Richmond. It was like Midlothian. right outside of Richmond. was small, teeny tiny. 
I f- located a car wash. Thank God, because it rained on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely poured. <laughs> $20 I'll never see again. <laughs> and then I hung out at the little McDonald's with just about everybody in town. But I want to say to you, by the time the tow truck driver gets there, my phone is not all, the only, the car is bricked, the phone is bricked. There's nothing to, he's tying up. He said, listen, you're on the side of an interstate. You have a car nobody wants to tow on a Saturday to a location nobody wants to go to. He said, you are. With a sister who doesn't want to be there. Yeah. <laughs> so, but me and this strange man, Spend an hour and 45 minutes. I know what his kids do. I know him, him, how him and his wife met. He said, I just really like towing. It's just really my time to myself. I'm so, I'm so sorry I'm here. I'm here, so. Anyways, Corey's saying me on your hearing row, and then you got to take me back to Midlothian. Oh, dirty day. <laughs> I'm not sure how we got to this conversation uh, topic. Oh, Google Maps. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, okay. have a bad end, guys. <laughs> so back to search engine optimization. Here's five things to keep in mind. We're going to break it down and we're mm-hmm. going to build up an account. Mm-hmm. So the definition. I'm going to let you give me a definition of what you, to speaking to a five-year-old, mm-hmm. would describe search engine optimization as. Search engine optimization is when you put your business at the highest point it can be online. So when someone Googles you, you show up first. Okay, I like it, I like it. I typically say this to people who in the past five years have been like, what do you do? do? It sounds like a made-up job. Yeah, just wait until you hear about the cookie thing. <laughs> I told the tow truck driver, he's like, well, what do you do for work? I said, you know sugar cookies? He's, I tell him the whole thing. He's like, I'm going to be honest, that sounds made up. And I said, you know what? I agree. You should have just said, we do SEO. And he'll be like, yeah, you know what? That sounds made up. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, it is. <laughs> you must know a lot about it. I would tell people, hey, do you know if you wanted to order pizza and you were in a new city, what would you do? And Google pizza places near me. Exactly. That's SEO. Why do you think that one pizza place showed up first? To me, because it's the best. Because it's the best plus SEO. So there's a lot of strategy behind it, and that strategy is ever changing. Sometimes people click with that definition. Sometimes they gloss over uh-huh. and then they say, because it's the best. Because <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> a lot of dirt echo there. So That's our definition. So here's kind of how it works. It's not a roadmap that you can just say start here and end here. SEO is a guessing game and the rules are ever changing. Which honestly, you're probably rolling your eyes when the rules are ever changing. Oh, yeah. It's something else we got to learn. You kind of want the rules to ever change Mm -hmm. because we're not the first bakers out there. Keep in mind, as search engines and AI get more complex, it opens the door for people who may have been sitting in that first position. So keep in mind, they always say the best place to bury a body is on the second page of Google. Nobody will ever find it. You usually find what you're Googling on the first page, a few little clicks down. 70% of clicks will be in the first listing in Google. So imagine as a business, if you've sat in the first position on Google, you're earning 70% more lead traffic from the internet than the guy in the second Right. And if someone just came to business before you you did, but if you, it was you a have time a superior in. product, it really sucks that they'd be getting 70% more income than you did. Triggering the little Googles. They keep talking. Oh, sorry. 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 We're saying the, yeah, the yeah. word. <laughs> Whispering. <laughs> um, right. Exactly. So if, if search engine optimization was a time-in thing, then anybody who was born after the guy in front of them yeah. would be in a waiting line literally for them to pass away. Yeah. And the, the last guy who just opened his business yesterday will eventually be out of business because no one will ever find him. Right. So the rules changing is extremely frustrating, but the rules changing is also extremely opportunistic. Because what worked 10 years ago, what worked 15 years ago, absolutely does not work today. Mm -hmm. And as AI gets smarter and smarter, it requires business owners to put more and more effort in, which makes it better user experience. So at the end of the day, we like to think if we have a website, we're Google's client. We're not. The person searching is Google's client. Google wants his clients, her clients. I don't know. What would you call Google? I think Google's a dude. They are their clients, mm-hmm. to have the best user experience. So a great user experience is I want pizza. I found a pizza place. The pizza was great. Yeah. And I found them on Google. That's Google's ideal scenario for users. Now, we are a vendor to that experience by creating the websites that help Google supply its users with the perfect pizza place. Yeah, exactly. So when the rules change in Google, while it is frustrating, it does require us to put it in more better quality effort to rank well in Google. But end users are more appreciative because they can find that local cookie baker who specializes in royal icing, uh, icing, icing custom cookies. <laughs> royal awesome. 
<laughs> just get out the words. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm asking them. <laughs> they wrong. Uh, that, so that's a great that's a great example, right? So let's take it to cookies. I want to get a sugar cookie baker. What if I typed in sugar cookie baker and it was a bunch of pizza places? I would be yeah. sad. So the more and more me as the user has to click around, the less and less good user experience I have through Google. I mean, if you Google something, right when it Googles, it'll be like, we found one trillion mm-hmm. things in 0.2 seconds. Mm-hmm. So their job is to get you to your answer as fast as possible, uh-huh. in the best way as possible. Now, if you use Google search, mostly on a desktop, you'll see something called the knowledge graph, which is means that they're actually pulling knowledge, they're pulling results into the Google search, and you don't even have to click on a website. They call it position zero. I will say that's on my phone all the time. Right. And it's Google making it even faster for you to find information. So Google's job is to connect the user to the information as fast as possible. Our job as vendors on Google is to provide the best information the best information you provide, the more better it is, which I know isn't a word, no the, better. the higher you rank on Google. Right. So we see the trade here. Now, as with everything, there's ways to manipulate this. That, you know, in a perfect world, we'd all just write really great stuff mm-hmm. and we just make really good answers. But that's not exactly how it works. And that optimization, that strategy is often built from backwards. So what happens is a lot of people make a lot of money being in the first position of Google, but when these rules change, you'll see people lose their shirt overnight. And they will have gone from upwards of million, a multi-million dollar website to zero dollars overnight. And it is always a bummer to see, but you'll say, whatever you did, Google didn't like it. And when they pushed out the new rules, it punished you. So they, you know, you get a, what's it called when you get a penalty? Is that what they call penalties? Uh When you check webmaster tools? And it's in there? I'm sure. Yeah. Anyways, Google, if you do enough manipulation, Google will tell you. Yeah. You done broke the rules. Google updates about 200 plus times per year. It has big updates and it has small updates. What they're always trying to do is just keep the playing field level. Fair. So, which is good for all of us. So, But what sometimes I- they have a little gap in the rules. And when you find these gaps and it allows you to unethically or advantageously climb above somebody who would probably had a better website mm-hmm. than you, that's that's. But today, SEO. <laughs> we're not talking about the bad way. We're talking about the good way that you can actually rank in different things so you can get more of that cold audience. Now, cold audience. Explain to us what that means. Cold audience is not hot. who has <laughs> never heard of you before finding you for the first time. The beautiful thing about cold audience searches is when somebody searches sugar cookie baker near me, they're ready to spend money. That is a keyword that somebody is ready to reach in their wallet and hire you. That's why it's such a valuable keyword. Now we call those money keywords because behind them is money. You are getting complicated. It seems but complicated. here's the thing: what you here's if somebody searches how to make royal icing, do you mm-hmm. think they're going to pay you? No. What if you sold royal icing recipes? Yes. So there's that search and chat. It's something to keep in mind as we talk through the rest of this thing. Yeah. Because a lot of people are like, "There's my my website shows up for my name," but if somebody already knew your name, they're not cold right. traffic; they're warm traffic. So you'll get cold traffic on things like Google. Where warm traffic kind of comes in is if someone in a community group mm-hmm. asked for, hey, does anyone know a local baker? I'm doing a, like a USA theme for July 4th. And someone recommends you who's your past client. That's a warm referral because yes. they've they've heard about you. They're cold. not just finding out Yeah, about you. cold is I want cookies. I searched Google. I found a baker that was in the first position in Google uh-huh. and I called them. That is the coldest lead and it's the most expensive because – all the SEO that had to go into them discovering you. So being in that position to be discovered is SEO. Yeah. Kind of in the simple terms. So Corey and I say the second point, places to consider SEO. Because a lot of times we just take that whole, like, I don't think it applies to me. It applies to all of us. If you're selling something, welcome to SEO. Right. In a way, if you have a website, you are an SEO as well. You may just be a bad one. (laughs) We all have bad ones. A lot of times when uh, someone's like, yeah, I get all my leads from Facebook. Mm. I'm like, okay, well, you're leaving money on the table there. It's not bad to just focus on Facebook. Just an undiversified lead source. Yeah, opened up to the cold audience yet. Right. So uh, Instagram went down the other day. Corey said, is Instagram down for you? But I thought she said, are you having problems? What did you ask me? I said, is it down? I said, is Instagram working? And I said, yep. And she's like, whoa, it's not working for me. I said, yep, it's down. And she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, great. I've been banned. So, <laughs> yeah, I knew. I was like, oh, no, Corey had a heart attack. 
Uh, so Instagram going down means any lead source from Instagram, your business immediately went to zero leads. Yeah, you were making zero dollars at that point. Anyone who was a past lead can no longer reach you. Any future lead can no longer reach you. Your business it has immediately stopped. So while you can't own anything on the website, we don't own Meta, we don't own Facebook, we don't own Instagram, we don't own TikTok, having a website is probably the closest Ownership. you can get. Uh, granted, you're just renting your domain name and then you're just renting out server space, but that will be the closest you can get to that. And the internet, the internet as a whole, rarely ever, ever, I don't think it's ever gone down in my lifetime. That'd be insane. I think it would be like the world would be insane. <laughs> right. Now, search engines can go down or your server where your website can go down, but all of it disappearing at one time is just right. would be cataclysmic. Did you know 70% of the internet pipes through Leesburg? I thought it was Ashburn. Oh, whatever. Northern Virginia. <laughs> yeah, I live there. <laughs> it's big and ugly. <laughs> yeah, there's a ton of server farms here, which is so funny. Heather Brookshire said mm -hmm. that her husband works on servers. And they named them, and one is named Corey, spelt your way. No way. Yeah, so you, she said no license plate tags, but definitely server. That's hilarious. Yeah. So Corey, the server. <laughs> also after, serves you. After serving you, <laughs> I'm going to pick you up. I knew that was <laughs> Okay, so when we consider SEO and the places to consider, I'm always going to lead with a website. If you don't have one, consider it. It is a business move. It is advantageous. Google indexes, which means it mm -hmm. shows you websites first. So I'm going to ask you a little okay. complicated question. I feel like you already know what is coming. What if it's on something like My Custom Bakes? So well, that is a comp. Do you have any of the comp? We'll answer it in a simpler way. My Custom Bakes and Cast Iron for the free plan don't allow you to have your own domain. You would have a domain extension. So it'd be My Custom Bakes dot com forward slash heather's bake shop yeah so right now if i made a website i did do www dot uh, mixing bowl cookie company dot com i own that domain that domain can rank for me if i was on cast iron's free plan it would be www dot cast iron dot me forward slash shop forward slash whatever mixing bowl that is you can still rank those websites you definitely can it's just a little a, a considerably more work because a website is both the site itself and the domain name. Mm -hmm. So if, and this is just a little complicated, if we got a backlink, let's say some news article said, my, you know, Mixing Bowl Cookie Company had a great year this year. We wanted to feature them. And they linked back to castiron.me, cast iron benefits from the backlink, not necessarily you. But now let's say same news article and it's Mixing Bowl Cookie Company .com. Well, that's your domain name. So yeah. you directly benefit from it. There is pros and cons to each. However, from an SEO's perspective, you would want to be on your own domain, mm -hmm. which I know Cast Iron's rolling out um, for their pro their, plan or something. Yeah. So it's just something to keep in mind. At the end of the day, I don't want you to not get a website because you can't get your own domain. Mm -hmm. I would, having anything is better than having nothing. True. And true. And There's the just the ways day, to get better and better. Yeah, a it. website is better than just relying on your Facebook page or your Instagram account. That would be dangerous, especially because Facebook and Instagram belong to the same company. So mm -hmm. even though it feels diversified, it really isn't. Being banned on one will likely ban you on mm -hmm. the other. True. Okay. Or being hacked on one often hacks you on the other. True. So something to keep in mind. So when we say, you know, Corey and I talk about it. Sometimes I like to do little strategy sessions while we're slinging icing for classes. <laughs> what if we lost a Facebook page? What would be the next line of defense? What would probably be, you know, having the newsletter, the email, mm -hmm. the podcast and things like that. Do we have a secondary option where we can socially connect with people? Again, nothing is ideal, but it's always plan for the worst. Wait, fail to plan, plan, plan to fail. Yeah. And a plan for the worst, hope for the best. Get stuck on the side of the road two and a half hours. <laughs> Hello, my name is Corey. Hope. <laughs> <laughs> so websites always going to be the primary source. When you talk to most SEOs, the first thing they're going to ask you, you can hire these types of people. They're very expensive. They're going to ask you if you have your own website. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, they're going to say, you need to get started right there. And you can say, but I have a Facebook page. It's like, yep, that's not. When you Google, do you typically see Facebook as a top listing unless you Google a business name? No. No. So if you do a keyword, a money keyword, a keyword that insinuates you're going to spend money, you're going to see a website first because Google realizes most people can take action from that. Now, I, Heather has said the word money keyword twice, and I just want to explain that to you in layman's terms. Okay, take a while. Um, if I was a recipe developer, you know, and you were looking for a royal You're like icing. layman's and you used the word recipe developer? I know. I just want to be one. <laughs> if I was the What are you? Recipe developer. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I only know how to eat them. <laughs> so what you would do if you were Googling something, so what would be a non-money keyword that you would think? For what a recipe developer wouldn't want you to search? Mm -hmm. uh, sugar cookie baker. 
Okay. Because you'd be going by you'd not. You wouldn't want the recipe. You don't want to meet. So that's not a money keyword for me. But if you said recipe for sugar cookies and a I'm selling keyword. you a recipe, that's now a money keyword because you ha- can put money behind it. So you'd yeah. be like, oh, well, I saw her ingredients. They look pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and buy this recipe from her. Mm-hmm. So now we have the money keyword. So that's a keyword is what you search in Google. A money keyword is the one that can maybe potentially give yeah, you Yeah, and money. that's going to look different for a lot of different businesses. Yeah. Because like we said, a recipe developer wants that keyword, but a sugar cookie Baker really doesn't want you to search that. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. So that's when we think of website. But now TikTok in yeah. it's banned in Montana now. It may it could be banned anywhere, but in the meantime, you can optimize it for SEO now. And people are actually, and this was a big thing Google didn't predict that yeah. people were using TikTok as a search engine. It's because I think people are visual. They're visual, and, and you I get exactly what it. you need yeah. immediately. And there's a limit of three minutes or a minute. Yeah. So you can get. I mean, I, I, I was watching TikToks on p traps under the kitchen sink and why they're functional and how to make them in seconds. And I'm not even necessarily interested in that, but just clicking or searching p trap takes me to immediately hundreds and hundreds of videos about plumbers teaching you how to do this. I almost would search it more on TikTok than YouTube because YouTube is like a 50-hour long video. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, where's the P-trap yes. part? So YouTube recognized that and comes up with YouTube shorts. Yeah. So you can see that how humans are engaging with the internet dictates how these search engines are adjusting. I heard, and I'm not sure, this was probably sometime last year, that Google was going to start indexing TikToks to get some of that traffic. Wow. Meaning that an individual TikTok will show up just the same way YouTube videos do. I mean, do. That's, that would be so handy mm-hmm. if you're just, because I'm visual, I need but something now, to see. who owns YouTube? Google. Right. So oh, Google doesn't want you to go to yeah, TikTok, they sure. want you to go to YouTube Shorts. So you'll start seeing YouTube Shorts before you see TikTok. Mm-hmm. But if you get on TikTok and you click to a video and it's this baker showing you like her issues with her royal icing sometimes when you click the comments it'll be like how to make royal icing you can actually search it from the comment section of another video i know uh now you see because you posted about it that you can write really long descriptions now on yeah TikTok. they changed it so when you can write words you are in what is a search engine a lot of times search engines can't watch tv yet a search engine can't really see imagery yet they're very close obviously and ai is really yeah bridging this gap. But what search engines really need is words. So when you see alt text, when there's an image, Mm -hmm. the alt text is for people with disabilities like seeing or hearing, Mm -hmm. but it is also a component of search because you're essentially also telling a search engine, a robot that can't see or hear, you're telling them what's there. You can write alt text for your Instagram photos. Mm -hmm. It's in the advanced settings. I typically do it. I think you can do it for TikTok. I know you can do it on any website because they do want you to do that on websites. And I think you can do it. You can do it on Facebook. Can you do it on Google um, Maps? You can, but it is that it is, is a bit of an, an advanced step. It's called EXIF data. There you oh, go. Okay. Yeah. So you'd have to um, add yeah. that. And so upload it. because TikTok doesn't necessarily have that, they've given you more space in your caption to actually write about the video, not like look at this cute horse. No, hey, today we're going to use royal icing. And Keyword. I'm going to show you a a Keep, tip. Keyword. Keep going. On how to make this cheek of a horse using royal icing. It's a keyword. There you go. So we have royal icing. We have cookie dough, sugar cookie, things like that help to connect the product, the visual, the collateral. Uh-huh. What do you call it? The creative yeah. to search. But in why you're thinking like they can just watch the video. No, we're, we're not, not talking doing to them. it for the, the end user. We're doing it for the robots behind it. Right. So... Um, and these robots, the buzzword, they're called crawlers because what they do is they crawl through the internet constantly. They're constantly crawling your website. They're looking at your website. They're looking at your TikToks and they're saying, okay, let us sort this because we need yeah. to connect our end user to this media. How are we going to do it most yeah, effectively? So the more information you can give is the better it's going to perform for you. Mm-hmm. So I hate to say that one sentence caption, technically not optimized. Yeah. Okay. So then we have, we have to consider SEO in Google reviews. Now this is probably within through the past three or four years that yeah. Google said, hey, we're actually going to crawl the review text. I know. So I was checking out my own reviews the uh-huh. other day, like a creepy person that I am, and it said four reviews talk about icing. Can I tell you what happened when I was on the side of the road as my battery's dying? Sure. The car could only be towed on a flatbed. So it couldn't be the tow truck that does a repos. Yeah. It had to be the flatbed tow truck. So I Googled tow service company's flatbed. Immediately in Google Maps, bolded is reviews that mentioned that the company used a flatbed. Yeah. Or it said this website mentions flatbeds. flatbeds. And then sometimes on Google, if it cannot find what you're doing, it says, says everything but the word flatbed. Yes. Does it reco- Does you, Do you need it to yes. say flatbed? So are you sure? Can we back you off the flatbed? <laughs> yeah. So in your Google reviews, 
I hey, one a review that says anything that's five stars is it's, better than yeah, no review. And even sure. if it is just a five star review with no text, but if you could get someone to be a chat of coffee and say, hey, can you kind of break down what your order was as well? Yeah, and like if review, they said great customer service, sugar quick cookies, turnaround time. A lot of times we feel like as a primarily sugar cookie baker and you offer a secondary item. Macarons, yeah. yeah. So I'll have somebody who placed a macaron order write a review and mention macarons because when somebody says macaron baker near me, even though your name may be sugar cookie boo bear baby, <laughs> we could possibly get some <laughs> of that cold trash. <laughs> you're going to get, you're gonna get a lot of clients and it's not the ones you think. <laughs> you're also probably not going to have to work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so consider that with reviews. That is a newer thing to SEO. Mm-hmm. And when it came out, we were all like, oh, cry. It's hard to get clients to leave it's those hard. kind of reviews. <laughs> but if you have somebody who's like a close friend and they've ordered mm-hmm. from you, have them to mention the keywords. I like to say, oh, could, would you mind explaining people what you ordered? It helps them. Yeah, what was your favorite part of yeah. the order? Can you write uh, about that? Yeah, yeah. And they're like, Corey. <laughs> oh, that's a search. <laughs> search <I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> so now – Kind of on the same lines of reviews is the Google My Business or Google Business Profile listings. It's That's the my same name. Favorite thing to update. It's great. So Google Maps. Whenever you search on Google Maps and it pulls up those businesses, those listings are called Google Business Profiles. They used to be called Google My Business. And they changed. Yeah. And they're only for local businesses, which is great because that's most of us. Yeah, think about it in terms of like an. I, I think Primera has a Google business listing because they have a location. However, nobody's ever going to go there. Right. You're but not going to be like, hey, I have John Manny. I toted my 500 pounds. I'm going to show Eddie where he's born. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, like Sugar Cookie Marketing doesn't have a business listing because you guys would never need it. But now, and nor does Google necessarily want us to clog up their feed they don't. with it. So, when you think of Google business listings, you think of immediate local service based businesses that people need, yeah. which is me on the side of the road i think plumbers tow trucks i've found hvac Bakeries. i want to i want I, if you're a walmart i want to know your hours if i need to know your hours because i can drive there today google business profiles are for you they are for you and i know people right now are saying but i'm a home baker i don't want them to be able to and drive you home. can while it's not optimized specifically for service area businesses you are still allowed to do that and when there's not a lot of bakeries competing like brick oh, and mortars you will dominate that search top- that is some. That is no money. Cost you zero dollars. I'd you, also like to purport this. Purport. 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 What is purport? Mean? Like to propose. I would like to. I feel like you said report, propose, I said and purport, you made purport. Purport. Define. <laughs> purport. <laughs> Define purport. Boop. It says appearing and stated to be true, though not necessarily so. Alleged. Okay. Alleged. I would like to purport. <laughs> Alleged. Alleged. I would like. To, this is my <laughs> allegation. <laughs> That when you're a brick and mortar, you have to offer more than a single product to stay in business. Yeah. So you're offering bagels, breads, cakes, cupcakes. Allegedly. Allegedly. But a sugar cookie baker, a cottage home base baker, likely only offers one to two products. Yeah. So even though the brick and mortar is favored in listings, you may still be able to beat them out when it's yeah, sugar for your cookies. your specific yes. thing. For and because sure. that bakery is going to be highly diversified, their website's going to be highly diversified keywords. Yeah, they might be doing cakes. They might be doing macarons. So cupcakes. when Google does a quick crawl and says, okay, in their listings of Google by business profile on their website, we see sugar cookie mentioned once, but they mentioned a million other things. However, in the sugar cookie bakery that's cottage home, we see it mentioned 50 times. We're going to put the 50 times over the once. Yeah. So if someone searches for sugar cookie baker, you might be able to show up above the brick and mortar. Yeah. Which typically, if we're just doesn't, going, typically, doesn't happen. typically happen, usually brick or mortar, oh, brick or mortar, <laughs> not brick, you're not, not brick. in, you're not <laughs> in brick mortar and brick, just one or the other. Shut brick up. and mortar, <laughs> brick and mortar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's um, there is a way, but even if if not. People still do a, and that's actually a question we got in today's text. Wow. They'll do a reputation check. And if they search your name, your business name directly, oftentimes your Google business will show up first when you have one of these like branded names, Mixing Bowl Cookie Company. Mm-hmm. If we just had Sugar Cookie Bakery, you're you're back yeah, to a keyword. Yeah, right. You'll show up and they'll be able to read those Google reviews. So even if you don't think you need it, as an SEO myself, Retired or otherwise, crying or either, it is highly recommended. <laughs> it is highly recommended. And it's you can hide your uh, – no, we're not going to cover that spe- yeah. specificity on here. You can hide your – In the cookie college, it shows address. you how to <laughs> hide your address in a way that yeah. won't get you penalized. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, and then the final place, although there's many places to consider it. You just touch my toe. Don't touch my foot. Corey and I don't touch each other. You know how, like, my mom would make us hug it's each other all the time? touched each other for nine straight months. I know. Months. I got it out of my system. But my, my mom would be like, take mom me would be like, each other. Cheek to cheek. Bum to bum. Yeah, my parents, <laughs> my mom thought it was so funny if we did, like, a cheek photo and then a bum to bum photo. <laughs> I haven't touched Corey since we were two. <laughs> Uh, Eventbrite or directory listing. So Yelp, you can optimize Yelp. Yelp. You can optimize Eventbrite for classes. You can optimize Facebook search. A lot of people don't use it, Mm -hmm. but you can. If there's a search engine within its own, because we were often thinking of Google, but with these sub directories, you can optimize them as well. If there's text and there's a search feature, it can be optimized. Yeah, in your about section on Facebook, optimize that. Lake oh, Ridge that one's Baker. so slept <laughs> Lake on. Lake Ridge Sugar Cookie Baker. The reason why it's kind of slept on is because people say, well, you don't typically see Facebook you recommendations yeah. in a Google search, but you do see it within a Facebook search. Facebook doesn't pull in Google listings. No. Right, but Facebook pulls in its own listings. How does Facebook do that? It's crawling these individual pages. Yeah, so leaving money on the table is by just like – creating something and then setting it and forgetting it. Mm-hmm. You know, right now, Facebook has, actually has updated the businesses. It took the little bio section and mm-hmm. it shortened it and oh. it moved it to the top. Oh. So now everyone's bio is like, I Cut off. I bake sugar. Ba- <laughs> <laughs> Facebook did a sturdy yeah. with that too with the little, you know, outtake yes. in the top corner. Uh-huh. Um, when Google Business Profiles came out, I think it had it been over six years ago, yeah. right? More that we that. could make our own. Yeah, I don't remember. It's been through so many iterations. But when it first came out, we were like, okay, there's only like five places to fill out information. Set it and forget it. Then Google tried to make – what was that Google um, Facebook competitor that they shut down? I can't remember. Google MySpace? Google Space? Google MySpace. Google. You said be really into it. <laughs> um, Come on, Google. <sighs> you know there's a Google graveyard where you can see all the products that Google – that they shut down. Killed by Google.com. It was called, I mean, they've killed so many more things. Google Code, Google Occurrence, Google Stradia, YouTube Originals, Google Hangouts now. Google My Business app, it's on here. Man, yeah. they cool, killed so many things. Corey, come on, think of it as I before I get there, before you get Was there. I on it? Yeah, I think we were. I don't think anybody was really using it, and that's why they deleted it. I'm getting so close. Okay, well, kid. It's, <gasps> oh, it's, somebody's it's, yelling. No. Somebody there says... Okay, let me do, do you- Google networking app that was closed. Google Plus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Google Plus. <laughs> so when- I loved Google Plus. I was always up to it. <laughs> Google Plus allowed pages mm-hmm. to have personalities, kind of like we see on Facebook. where you But could- it did not take off. No. So Google said, okay, we're killing Plus. And we're putting a little, a few of those features into these Google My Business profiles, yeah. which was allow you to connect with an audience. You can follow. I don't know if you can still follow a Google I don't My think Business profile. You can do events now. On yeah, your, you can you do, do posts. updates. Yeah, and then you could uh, list products and services. So when that feature hit the SEO world, the strategy became constantly updated, and yeah. people were saying, if I update this every week with a post. I'm seeing more and more traffic That's what because I Google's rewarding people who are investing back into this product. Yeah. That I mean, feature like is still around. Talking to nobody. You're talking to It makes cold. me feel good that the listing is updated. <laughs> yeah. I mean, nothing is a worse feature than a not being updated. Yeah. So uh, that's a huge one to consider. So moving on to our <laughs> one, two, fourth point. Corey wanted to talk about a huge thing to consider when it comes to SEO and that's rebranding. Yeah, rebranding. Because think about this, and this is what we try to just tell our clients a lot. When you build SEO, you're building it around your brand plus keywords. So let's pretend Corey was crumble. The what? crumbed cookie. The crumbed cookie. So we spent a lot of time. Not we didn't do a lot of work. We should <laughs> <I> have. <don't. laughs> kind of building SEO for this brand. And suddenly we changed the name. That branding, all that effort still exists, but now it's going in the wrong direction. It's not going towards the It's almost like Corey created in our own competition I know. and left it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's something to consider if you're like, well, I want to change the name. That's why we actually tell businesses, let's get it out of your system before we start SEO. I would say it'd be better to change your name at the beginning of your business than mm-hmm. it is five years down the road. I always tell businesses it's a better idea to rebrand and scrap your website before we get started than halfway through when we're in the middle of this because yeah. what we're doing is we're building up a brand that won't exist. 
And essentially, we've created a competition uh-huh. for us. And you might be like, well, when I change my brand, I'll change my website. But all that content on there will say the crumbed cookies is the best baker in Lake Ridge. Yeah, consider if you got best. So we have these competitions here called Best Of, and you go vote for somebody, and then you get an article written about you. But that article is timestamped 2021. If yeah. Corey's rebranded in 2023, that article no longer uses keywords to point to And Corey. I have no control over that. That's yeah. someone else's website who wrote about me back in 2021. It's an SEO strategy to literally reach out to websites and ask them to update that. I know. And I mean, you get We've maybe done I've it done before, it. And it's what, 25% so annoying. success rate? Yeah. People just, one, never message you back. The, the person, person who, who wrote, wrote the article is, is fired. <laughs> Absolutely. So you really, really want to, you, you want to consider that rebranding. It's but not a wrong thing. It's not. No, sometimes you have to, especially if you named it closely to the crumble guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, what you can do is actually go in and manually do it. It will take you a good chunk of a day, but you can go in and request to change the ones. And a lot of times it wants you to create an email and it'll send mm-hmm. you the email, verify mm-hmm. it. And you Those can are on directories out. that you do can, you still can access. Yeah. A lot of the times when websites scrape listings you know bakerias yes okay bakerias is a directory scraper meaning you exist there but you didn't ask me Mm -hmm. when they scrape that information they're likely scraping it from what i've seen yelp or google but when you rebrand they're not updating the fact that the old brand is now gone they'll just scrape the new brand i will say oddly it did because we updated your google yeah but a lot of people would just say, well, I'm going to just start a new one. Yeah. And that's the issue. So when you create website properties, when you list your business on Yelp, create a spreadsheet. And this is what we do is create a spreadsheet and just keep that information there uh, and the direct URL to it so that if you should have to rebrand, it's not this hunt and peck. Yeah. There's a cold audience getter out there for me that still is directed to my old email address. I cannot find it. But See? I'm still getting leads. So whatever that is. You'll still have to continue to pay for your old yeah, email. Address. I finally did ask a client, like she booked with me, loved her cookies. She was like, by the way, where did you find this email address? Which is like Google. <laughs> to say that doesn't help. <laughs> if you're wondering if you're indexed on Google, the easiest way to do it is to open an incognito browser and search for the keywords. How to do an incognito browser. Control, shift, shift N. N. On, and on a Mac, it'll be command, shift, N. Or you can right click the three top dots in the corner. And then you can say open an incognito browser or any link in Google. You can right click and say open an incognito window. And what did you say that will do for us? It removes the cached results. True. So you might look up yourself all the time. If you're if you're Heather, you're doing it every day. Our clients do it constantly. <laughs> Our clients are like, I'm the best. Like, I think yeah, you're so Google. Eventually, if you keep Googling yourself and clicking to your website, Google's like, I think they want to see Heather.com. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, an important thing that I think a lot of small businesses don't realize is that your Google search is unique to your mm-hmm. internet behaviors. Yeah, and when mine, you search something, yeah. it's going to be different than what I see Even if we're end. sitting arm in arm, butt to butt, cheek to cheek, <laughs> what we're going to see is different because Corey searches and Corey search history is curated to what she's done. Now, when we wipe our history and clear our cache, we kind of reset. So an incognito browser allows us to do that without removing all our passwords. So then if you're like, you're always searching yourself, you're like, yeah, I'm at the top of Google. I'm making a bazillion dollars. Look in the incognito browser and you'll see that, you know, you'll get a little humbled. What can I say? It's a little more realistic. But if you scroll down to the bottom of any incognito tab, it still knows your location. So while people think it's completely incognito, it is not... There is such a thing as proximity search. So if you search something and you're very close to a business, you'll likely see that business. But if you're 40 minutes away, you likely won't see that business even in an incognito tab. They're always watching. They're always watching. And then don't forget that Bing is a now actively a growing search. A lot of people searches. sleep on Bing because we used like, to say I just Google. how to how to rank in Bing, rank in Google yeah. because Bing was so not smart. But now that it has uh, AI, Chat GTP, and it's really changed how it's curious to and me. And what people don't realize is when you buy just a regular computer like a Dell, mm-hmm. it's got that's what it has. That you have to go Should download I give up Google. Do you get what I'm saying? That no. You said when you buy a Dell. Pavements. Pavements. Some Dell fan is. Okay, what was that thing again? 
When you buy a Dell computer and you <laughs> a, Dell. <laughs> a Dell's laptop <laughs> and you turn it on, it will automatically have Bing on there. You have to go and physically uh-huh. download Google. Oh, when I yeah. accidentally Bing's like, hey, this, I thought you were like, did you want me to help? And no. Most, <laughs> most of the older generation won't go download Google. Dad because, still has Bing as a default. Yeah, so they'll use it. it. Yeah. Dad will literally o- open the internet. It'll default on Bing. Then he'll go to his desktop and open Chrome. <laughs> I feel like Dad Bing's Google. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so that that is that is that the reason why AI has really thrown a wrench in Google's plans is because we don't know necessarily where AI, where AI is pulling its information. I don't think it's pulling from the first position. So a lot of times people search and then click on the first listing. Yeah. that's where the information uh-huh. is. It's where Google has decided. But when you ask AI to find something for you, we don't necessarily know no, where the yeah. AI is pulling that information. It's pulling it so quickly. It's pulling it from a repository. It's already crawled, and it's spitting out something so specifically uh-huh. not accurate, yeah. but close enough. That is it pulling from the fifth page? Is it pulling from the first page? We just we don't, don't know. know. And that's kind of where this – and then AI being its own intelligence, how do you optimize for it? It's going to take over, man. It's going to take over, man. I love AI. Remember me? <laughs> I was really, I said, please, but I asked you to do my job. <laughs> okay, another thing when you're rebranding, consider social media. I do not want, I would recommend, don't abandon a page and start a new one. Take the page and rebrand it. Mm-hmm. There, It keeps a connection there. Yeah, it's a lot more changing and doing. Then you say, well, I'm just going to delete it so I don't have to, have, no, no, no. There's still power behind this stuff. You yeah. still have these audiences. Even if it's two people, you've posted content, you've been crawled. And yeah, now been, to just abandon it means you start over. Yeah, I know. And you don't want that. It's easier to change your name mm-hmm. in the details than it is to try to start, start a new page. It's so hard to start new pages. I almost hate when someone's like, yeah, we don't have one of those. <laughs> All right, we'll make one for you. See, if you have one, you want to keep that going because it could have been indexed already and all you just need to do is change your name. Mm-hmm. The thing we always recommend for clients to do is even if you don't want to be on Twitter, park that name. Park it and then reserve it, one, because nobody else can. Mm-hmm. Two, it still has the name. The name. Yeah, so you, if your website, maybe you don't have time for a website, but you can make a Twitter account, that can rank for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, it won't be the primary. No. If you don't have a website, it could definitely move up. Um, I'm not sure anymore. But having those places parked, having your Yelp parked, even if you're not going to pay into Yelp's Ponzi scheme, uh, it still might help you get more of this internet traffic yeah. because at the end of the day, a lot of people think of these profiles as individuals, but they amass themselves together to create a portfolio of your search. Yeah. So if someone were to Google a specific name like Gabe's Automotive went there yesterday, granted he shares it with a Gabe's clothing store. <laughs> store that I accidentally called. She's like, man, this is a clothing store. That's if Gabe's thing. Automotive, if I go the websites first, then his Facebook page, then his Instagram account, then the Twitter account. What a healthy first page that you're, even though you're competing with the clothing store. The first page of, of Gabe's Automotive yeah. is all your social not, profiles. If most people aren't clicking to the second page, Gabe's is oddly going to get all that. When you hear, there's an ad that plays on when Gams watches old people TV. And it's about reputation management on online searches. Oh. So what happens is, let's pretend you were alleged to have broken into the Walmart after hours, but it was a case of mistaken identity. However, you were arrested and your name was put into a news article that was fed to a bunch of other yeah. news um, what citations. What happens when I Google Corey Miracle is it's like, Corey went to prison, Corey this, but even though she wasn't, the culprit, yeah. her search results are now tarnished by this poor reputation. Yeah. What reputation management companies do is they create other websites and put positive stuff Corey about you. Is, uh, yeah, and they likely go to these syndications is the word I'm looking for. They like to go to these new syndications, say take it down, yeah. cease and desist, you know, see how much of these things because that's what reputation management yeah. is. So when we pull up a business and the first listing is their website, but the next 10 are how bad they are, yeah. we've got a huge problem. We do. What do you think your audience is doing? They're looking at the Running. Thing, saying we got a huge problem. <laughs> We're not going to be using this company. <laughs> One thing that's – I just see it on TikTok a lot. This is so random, yeah. but I do see it on TikTok, and it will be like, yeah, they're deleting all the Google reviews, but it will be like when an onslaught of people come uh-huh. and give a business fake reviews because they – Corey and I had to deal with that with the pizza guy. Yeah. I think we talked about it in a podcast of yesteryear. But Yelp put them in a maintenance mode, put their profile in a maintenance Google mode. did. 
Yeah, but they had it on Yelp too. Uh-huh. Yelp was the bigger way back then. And it's not – the business can't go and delete any no. of the reviews. But what they'll do is if there is so many people coming and leaving reviews at one time, Google will be like, oh, this is not – a million people didn't just go here. Right. This Because Google knows if you uh, – I really like this feature on Google. I hope they never take it away. But if you want to go to a business and you expand the hours, mm-hmm. it'll tell you what typically it's like yeah. and if it's busy or less busy. And I actually tie my life around not as busy <laughs> as it could be. Um, something to keep in mind – when you were talking about that, what were we just talking about? I said it was random, but they'll take those reviews down. People are like, they deleted my review. Yeah. Here's an interesting – one of our clients was like, hey, we use a website called Guild Quality to get reviews. So I went to look into it because they wanted us to do a bit of management for it. But it's genius because it allows people to leave you bad reviews. Yeah. But you do not have to choose to post them. But you're like, well, if they're going to leave a bad review – no, no, no. They got the steam out. Yeah, like, on the guild quality like, listing. Like let them talk their heart yes. out. And they're like, well, I guess you weren't that bad. I so it looks like it's kind of smart. It doesn't work all the time, but it does def- definitely work. It says, hey, would you fill out just your unbiased, honest opinion of our company? A lot of times and people are like, oh, I hated everything. You know, yeah. just these one, unpleasable. One, one, right. one, two. And what guild quality does is send it back to the cut, the, you know, our client and say, hey, they didn't like this. And you can choose whether to push that review to your profile, which you likely wouldn't, or go back to the client and say, how can I make oh, this no. better? Oh, no. It gets their anger before they get to Google. But then you, have, you can't now do it you on know Google. they hate you. So you can be like, hey, Janice. Yeah. This thing just crossed Absolutely. <laughs> Damage control. <laughs> yeah. And really feel like, you know, I think it's smart. It'd be smart if more people came up with that. I know. Because you like Corey said, then you cannot like, g- delete them. Nothing's real. <laughs> oh, Corey, nothing's real. <laughs> Camel, Camel, Camel on Amazon tells you how many of the reviews it thinks are inaccurate or paid. Oh. So it tells you a percentage that 40% of these we think are paid. Wow. So adjust your expectations accordingly. Oh, yeah. I mean, I on Google, though, because I know businesses can't go and delete it, great. You can be like, hey, brother, can you go and write this review for me? I do definitely depend a lot on their written reviews. Do you know what Amazon's doing now? What? To punish people who manipulate. Yeah, they always are. Hey, we'll give you a free bottle of whatever yeah. you just ordered if you leave. <laughs> they're going to they they're gonna tag the item with this product is often returned. Uh, yeah. And it's going to stop this. I was reading this article the other day that a man, he was from India and worked for Amazon, like website services in India, moves to Seattle, Washington, and starts consulting for businesses that sell on Amazon saying, I know how the algorithm works. But what they, what he wasn't telling them, nor did they ask, but they were just as guilty, is that he was actually writing back to his friends in India, telling them oh to move the listings ahead because those first listings. So he looked like the like the oh guru. people were paying him because they were making millions. Oh my God. So he was making a ton of money, but sending it back to the so Amazon oh. figured out the people in India, this guy, and the people who used him and sued them all, <gasps> fired the people immediately. So he realized something was wrong when he went to go talk to them and nobody answers. Oh, no. Yeah. Could you imagine when Amazon's closing yeah. mode? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bezos comes out knocking. <laughs> uh, so rebranding SEO considerations, Google search. Uh, I like to tell clients, Google yourself. What shows up? That's what Corey and I often do when we want to optimize for a company is we just go through the Google search mm-hmm. and see what's there. Can if we change it's it? it's ranking high, let's pick that one first. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we can go back to page 10 and still find directory yeah. listings, especially yeah. those scraper ones. Yes. is like low quality guys. Um, so let's walk through point number four, breakdown of writing an article for SEO. I swear you just said point number four for the one we just did. Point number four. <laughs> <laughs> Usually you're listening. I just got that. So podcast left to do. What <laughs> coin? Good stuff. It's good stuff. 52 minutes. Ooh, I'll leave you a point four. Then We're we won't do only point five. At 52 minutes. You act like that's a low score. <laughs> Breakdown of an SEO article, a lot of what you've heard us talk about is just kind of setting up these profiles and walking away. But SEO is an ongoing investment into these social profiles. And a great way to do that is by writing articles specifically on a website, probably cross-posting it to your social profiles as well. And listen, between all you people who are just like, yeah, I'm going to go have chat GTP write it for me. They're going to catch on. They're catching They're, on. D- don't just let them do not content. Let, the, the one big thing I saw people saying, the big red flag about AI writing articles is they're just regurgitating what's already on the internet. Yeah. They're not creating new content. So what happens is in the future, 10 years from now, AI will be rewriting AI articles that rewrote AI articles, <laughs> and it will be such a non-authority. Yeah. Yeah. So what you want to do, 
when you want to write, let's say a blog post, blogs are extremely, extremely effective ways at optimizing your website. You'd pick a single keyword. So let's do an example. What, let's say you're teaching sugar cookie classes. What would be a keyword? We can do the one that we did can at the beginning of COVID. In-person cookie classes? A little broad. So we want to kind of niche it down a little bit. So what Corey and I said, uh, well, we wanted to teach cookie classes, but COVID was kind of still going. Yeah. And so we said team building activities to consider during COVID lockdown. And that's what people were Googling. Right. Co- team building activities, COVID, because they wanted COVID conscious options. How to keep the, the, the work-life balance together, how to keep yeah. people engaged. Because they, they needed people not to quit and move away. Yeah. But they needed something where they could have distance. So we did, you know, we optimized for virtual cookie classes using team building COVID activities. That's the keyword. Mm-hmm. So people who are looking for team building COVID activities, we gave them five options. But the fourth option is sh- virtual sugar cookie classes. Yeah. So what we didn't do is dedicate an entire article to sugar cookie classes. We teach classes that deal with sugar cookies while teaching cookie classes. For Please sure. call us for your sugar cookie classes needs. <laughs> But what we did is we added valuable content. We wrote an article between 500 to 1,000 words. Uh-huh. People always say, how long they should How long should they be? Not two sentences. You can't have – that's called a thin page, and it's worthless. Yeah. We need we need some some thicker than a snicker content. Yeah. Think about it. When you read an article in the news, you get the introductory, you get the thesis, and we get the supporting arguments, mm-hmm. and then we get the closing statement. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the uh, outline I like to follow when it comes to writing an article. So we have, hey, COVID's been weird. <laughs> you know, kind of building up this relationship. But here are some options to consider when it's time for team building activities. Oftentimes a person searching this is HR or the, you know, right. office admin. So then we'd always focus on that keyword, but we'd also focus on value added. And that's what your end user wants. Corey has value checked added. out of this. I'm burning Do you want me pointing at you? It is so hot. It is so hot. <laughs> I thought it was like pre-menopause, but no, it's your own. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is it fail? <laughs> okay, so consider when you go write these articles. So how often do you think someone should add an article, a blog post to their site? Like how, if like doable, we'd be happy with once a month. Mm-hmm. Like, but if you could, twice a month is like mind boggling. I don't think setting aside two hours to write a blog post a week is a bad thing. If this is your primary source of income, mm-hmm. don't let AI write it. Don't. It can I, write some of it. You're tempted. I can tell. We've all been there. We've all been there. But really put in the focus and find the niche keyword. And think about what your audience is searching. searching. Don't just be like, I want to tell you the story of one time I had this weird dream. That's going to do you no favors. What we want to do is provide people with knowledge of things they're looking for specifically locally to you. You know who does a great job of this? Uh, so, semi sweet Mike? Yeah. Okay. So he sells cookie cutters. Yes. But I got targeted in an ad, yeah, and he, he says, all these go ads. to my website. He's got a great set of creatives. My website gives you free icing and uh, cookie dough recipes. Yeah. So he's Why would he give shop. us something free? Because his end goal isn't to sell you a recipe. It's to sell you cutters upon cutters. Right. Upon cutters. How does he get you to need cutters? you got a recipe. <laughs> now you're like, what do I do with all this dough? So you can kind of see that his recipes are his gateway drugs to getting you to uh-huh. buy that cookie cutter. What you're going to do is you're going to go to his website. I haven't been there, but I assume, judging by how savvy he is with marketing, is yeah. that recipe is behind a sign-up form. It could Sign be. up for my newsletter and recipe immediately And now shows he's up grown his newsletter letter and you've gotten a recipe that you're happy to have given your email for. And he's going to sell you on cookie cutters because that'll be the next thing you need. So when you write articles, think about that. What can I give so that I can get? That's why Corey and I are really big into the scratching your back. You scratch mine. You got to give to get. A lot of times, and I know you guys know, I do love me a farmer's market. You do? They have no great information. (laughs) It's hard to find where they are, find out the times. So if you wrote that and then at the end was like, sign up for my newsletter and I'll give you all the... Imagine. So if I search for farmer's market... Lake Ridge and Corey's website for sugar cookies, the first one that shows up because it has the most comprehensive information that even the farmer's market isn't providing. What you could think is I don't want to send them to that farmer's market because my com- competition has a vendor there. That is short-sighted thinking. Mm-hmm. What you want to do is you want to write this article, publish it, get it indexed, and have them go to that vendor. But now you're in their ear. And if you had a pop-up that said, hey, you're here. Do you you're like, like what I you think see? I've seen you before. Yes. Maybe you can grow your email list. Maybe you can say, click here and I'll give you my recipe. Or maybe you yeah. can say, click here and I'll give you and I'll give you a newsletter where I feature farmers markets in the area. Yeah. 
I mean, you got to give to get. You, you can't just be this get. selfish, pay me, pay me, pay me, because at the end of the day, people are going to be like, I don't know you, and somebody else was scratching my back, and you're not. Yeah, true. Amen. Grow that funnel. What do you think this podcast is for? If people are really honest, this it's podcast a is a funnel. It's a funnel to the group. Because you don't have to pay to listen to it. We could put this behind a paywall on Patreon. But it's not the point. The point is to give you guys information, to build trust, to build camaraderie, to build community, so that one day when you're ready to sign up for the Cookie College, you think, well, the twins seem to know. They've helped me in the past. Maybe they can help me in the future. Do you think I love making a one-minute reel that took me an hour to make? The horse cheeker was great. Horse cheek was great. But it takes me a long time to make that. But what I'm doing is giving you a little tutorial, a little wet your whistle, and I'm like, hey, by the way, there's this group you may want to join. And those podcasts. Now that you know how to make a cookie horse. And Corey and I really, really like the uh, approach of give then take. I know there's many marketing approaches, but that one feels the less icky to me. And it really does benefit people, especially those who can't afford to pay right now. They Absolutely. still get something. And then when you're ready, down the road, if this marketing has truly helped you, you'll have the money to pay mm-hmm. The cookie that's college why or cookie class see kids. Us. That's why this is branded sugar cookie marketing, not the cookie college. Because we don't want to send you right to something where we're like, oh, crap, I got to pay for it. No, I want you to get all the free stuff from the main group. And then if you're like, wow, I'm doing great. What more could I learn? Come on over, baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> so that is. So consider the breakdown of an SE article. article. Don't be too broad. Uh, have every point support the thesis statement. So the, you know, if you said the icing recipe that my grandmother made, you can talk. I know people hate recipe SEO. They do. Because like do. when you go to that and it's like. One, one day yeah. when I was born. It was a thundering night when my grandmother came up with this chicken noodle recipe. If you want to do fun things to do in McLean, Virginia on a Saturday. <sighs> oh, cookie <man>. classes. <laughs> Places, uh, breweries in Virginia where you can take your dog. Oh, that's a great one. So you're going to say, well, Heather and Corey, that has nothing to do with key- my keyword, my money keyword. But what it does is establish you will show up and you will show up in search results. Huh. And that, what they say is like a high tide raises all ships, a high a high valued SEO article will raise the whole website. Even though it may yeah. not directly, you, like you won't see your homepage sure. rank above this for that keyword. Sure. You will see that your website will be seen in better eyes with Google because you're helping Google help its audience. Yeah. Yes. So that's a huge, huge strategy. And that takes us through what was supposed to be five and is now four points. Four four points with two fours. Fow, fow. We'll give you the fow one one. But fow, fow, fow one. Be fow, fow, fow. So, Corey, take us through the cookie class. Welcome. Sit in with the hard sale. You guys got that for free. <laughs> so what the cookie college is, is an extension of sugar cookie marketing. In sugar cookie marketing, we have jam packed it full of free Facebook lives, free everything you can think of, strategies, <laughs> everything, ideas. All of this thing. <laughs> it's honestly in the sugar cookie marketing group. And we've fine tuned that group to be just marketing fo- focus when it comes to bakers. If you're like, you know what? I want just a little bit more. I want to, to deep dive farther in the SEO topic. You know, that hurt my brain. I would like to understand it a little better. We've created the cookie college and it's a monthly membership that gets you access to over 90 courses. And it's not all just about SEO. You have email marketing in there. You have how to create a Facebook ad, how to create monthly newsletters, which I think I said email marketing, but that's a little bit different. Just how to set up a workspace, how to create a yeah. domain name, so how to use So all these things together using your funnel to funnel people in. I would say a lot of sale. it's funneling. I mean, it's a that's, lot of funneling. Uh, that's how Corey and I make our sales is through funneling. And my mom said, Bundling. <laughs> You're bundling to bundling. <laughs> so what we do is try to make you a well-rounded business. So if <laughs> well-rounded bundling, <laughs> well-rounded bum <laughs> in business. <laughs> so when it comes <laughs> when it comes to Instagram going down for a few hours, when it bumps to <laughs> You're not sitting on your bum. <laughs> but yeah, it's really just. <laughs> <laughs> You can leave us a bad review for the Google. Uh, that said, the cookiecollege.com is where you can learn more about that. But we have a couple of cheaper options like cookie class kits if you just want to get into cookie classes. Um, I will say we're going to the slow season of cookie classes. This would be the time to learn how to do this. Come the holidays, you will not have time to learn yeah, it. You'll be like <laughs> fighting for air. I can't make 
Uh, there's a person in the cookie college and she wanted to get into classes, but she's like, I never taught it before. So she taught our last class to her whole family and they took a group photo and it was so cute, cute. to see them all. And she was that's like, that's honestly how we started. We made our yeah. sisters and try not to Google when they're mm-hmm. looking at We it. asked them to be like normal, please be normal and be saying normal <laughs> things. So she's already gearing up to teach for holiday classes, but she practiced with her family Smart. and it created a, a really cute experience as well. Plus you get those photos. I don't know who your sister is. Absolutely. Post that photo up. We, all right. We and Ashley, we don't look at anybody like she has red hair. So uh, that's something to definitely check out if you have some time, especially in the summer. If you're like going on a family vacation, and you don't want to spend time with your kids. The time. You come spend listen, time with us. Listen, yeah, listen to these voices. Yeah, on repeat. These little, these little voices. So thecookiecomment.com, but click, uh, click and check out the other options. I knew we got the two dollar transfer club, which. Which I'm sending out a new the newsletter goes out every Wednesday morning at eight. Yeah. I'm including one transfer per email. Every week? Every week. Just for just to sign up for the newsletter? To learn something for free, you get more free. And in the newsletter, don't you you're never really truly telling. You're really just going over what the podcast was. For free. What for free? A free funnel. A free You've been funneled. <laughs> Get your bundle in my bundle. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go to sponsors. And did you Sponsors. are you getting tired of the podcast? Yeah, because we have some texts. Two. Okay. Top. This one has a big chunky question and a very short text. Is it a chunky answer that goes? Yeah. with Yeah, it? it's a very a short one. answer. I mean, a it's short, a very short question. Yeah, okay. we'll choose a short answer. To now this one has a really long question, and I couldn't read it very quickly. I'm gonna have to do that. You can one. choose one. Okay, I choose the short guy because that's one I can see quickly. Can we do it right now? Yeah. Hi, twins. Ashley with Dapple Bakery in Northeast Houston here. What strategies do you recommend to help client trust our businesses if they've never used us before? Clients who never used it before are cold. Cold clients. Cold audience. So likely they've entered your funnel through a referral from a warm client or yes. from a, dare I say it, Google search. Lots of times they do the stockerinsky, which is what I do, is you don't know I'm a potential client, but I'm soaking up all the information you're putting out there. Uh-huh. I'm going to your social profiles. I want to see the last time you made a post. I want to see that you're, you're, you're optimized in your about section, that your banner image isn't a uh, heart from Valentine's Day. Absolutely. I want to see that your page has some age on it, an aged page. Yeah, I don't want to feel like it was just made yesterday and you're taking my money today. I also want to see, are you thankful for the reviews you got? I want to see that you have reviews. Did you respond to those reviews? Were you very generous or did you just do a thumbs up? Are your captions just emojis? Or are your captions providing more value? Are you replying to comments of questions? Are you showcasing that you are from around town, the same town that they are in? When you get a bad review, do I feel like you went out of your way to make it right? Or do I feel like you were defensive? Did you skip over even replying to the bad reviews? Is there an easy way to pay you online? Or do I have to risk it for the biscuit with cash exchange on a porch? hard to get in contact with you. Do you respond quickly with enough information that makes me feel warm, welcome, and informed? I ran out. Yeah, that was good though. Yeah, it was good. Okay, guys, you guys take that. You guys <laughs> influence it. There's, There's a lot of ways to provide social proof and build client trust. Uh, one way that people like to do it is win awards. Winning awards Win is a great awards. way that you yeah. that you know the best of competition. If you're a newer business, no sweat. I like to see that no people- sweat at all. You just won't make any sales. <laughs> I like to people see people shop where I shop. So if you're like, hey, the Nothing Bun Cake just changed its Ooh, hours. Love it. It's open Sunday now. Like I'm a I'm a bunter. Do you know a great way to build trust is that other people recommend you and you don't recommend yourself. I know, but when you're just starting out, I, I can see how you're like, how I know. do I do this? You I know? I recommend Corey. Somebody was looking. I just you know like okay, we live in a just in Fairfax County alone, it's 1.4 million people. True. And the Corey and I do not live in the same county. That's how populated. It is here. So I looked in Northern Virginia Foodies, which encompasses all the counties, of which there's got to be millions and millions all of folks. All the way down to like mid Lothian. Yeah. <laughs> my car is <laughs> mid no, of nowhere. <laughs> and I saw, like, I saw the post go up. It said posted uh-huh. just now in blue because uh-huh. that meant I was just posted. It said, I'm looking for a sugar cookie decorator. Now, I didn't want to come in and say, I don't know this person at all. Wink, wink. I wanted to be honest. So I said, I got to tag my twin sis at Corey Mira. You don't have the same last name. She didn't get that approved by Facebook. <laughs> she runs at Mixing Bowl Cookie Company, but here's one of the sets she just did that I loved. Yes. Of course, and, the lady asked for eggless. Sorry, I didn't read that cookies, part. And I said, yeah, that's that. not going to be me. 
<laughs> right. So what we were able to do there is able was able, even though I am a plant, yes. I know Corey, and I'm not getting a kickback. Nor she I was have... a plant. But then to that, I even made my own comment. Hey, I'm Corey with the Mixing Bowl And lucky enough for Corey, a random past client snuck in there and recommended you as well. And I said... Another baker. Oh, that was so nice yeah, of them. taken off the summer. Oh. I know. I know. So now Corey has mentioned the first three comments. I was able to be honest with myself by saying she is my twin sister, but I think she does a great job. The other baker recommended you because she is referring you work for the summer after your little agreement. And then and you obviously myself. tooted your own horn there. <laughs> But in my my recommendation, I added a photo, and in Corey's recommendation, she quickly added a photo that matched the theme that I the lady did, requested. I did. So that is how you can build trust. Now, trust is built, not earned. No, no I it's guess earned, it's earned. Not built. Maybe not built. <laughs> it's not given. It's easily. not given. <laughs> So those things, having a website is a great trust factor as well. Your email it, address not being at Gmail. Absolutely. Makes it feel like this is a That auto space. body shop where I got the car to do yeah. is uh, RVS98 at gmail.com. <laughs> like, having okay. a business Venmo account does make it feel bigger and not but so. invoicing makes it feel even it does. bigger. It does. Having a professional email signature. There's a lot of things you can do. Having a quick response time. Quick response time. Even a form, if you're not mm. ready for a website, a form mm. feels nice and snuggly. Nothing is worse than messaging a business and just not hearing back for weeks. Yes. That would be the opposite mm-hmm. of trust building. I, it happened to me. I wanted a car, company to work on the car. <laughs> they didn't, obviously. <laughs> and they replied to me three weeks later saying, so sorry we missed this. Yeah. And then that leaves a bad taste in your Makes mouth. Makes me like think, what like, else mm. are you going to miss? Yeah. <laughs> that was just the first thing. <laughs> okay. That was our text. Now let's go through the spans. Sponsors. Okay. Let's go up with... AE Core backers. Are you looking for a food safe backer? I am. Something that showcases your bakes in the best light. Yes. Something that's rigid and doesn't bend easily. As a matter of fact, yeah. that's matte, does not reflect light. Are you mm-hmm. done with your saying? What do you mean? Just keep it green? Yeah, yeah. dude. Right. I, yeah, I want it. I want it. We're doing a stick. I want it. I want it. <laughs> AE Core Backers is a food safe backdrop that we've partnered with. Believe me, I did the Stockerunski with them before. When we Corey says Stockerunski, she's saying it stocked their company. Stocked it. She extensively, so it became a Stockerunski. It <laughs> so wasn't good. a short stock, it was a stock of runes. <laughs> so I had actually bought from them before they even knew what sugar cookie marketing was because I really wanted to put it through the test. And I've become obsessed with their backdrops. They're they're one of the only food safe ones out there. I love that they're rigid. You can get them in a multiple sizes, you cake people looking at you. It's matte, so the light isn't reflecting from your camera, from the light source, you know, the natural light source and things like that. Um, and they're just a great company to work with. I have not seen someone say, wow, they have treated me bad. They have poor customer service. You know what I really like about them? They're all on the Facebook pages. They're there yeah. and they're reading and they're watching and they're helping mm-hmm. and they're commenting and they're building. Also, trust. if you get an AU Core backers and you tag them in your Instagram photo, she will come and like it. That's a go. free like right there. Get you scratch your back. Lots of times she'll comment scratchers. on it too. <laughs> hey, that's what it should be. If somebody tag, if somebody goes out of the way to tag, you should absolutely drool. Oh, I know. Drip. Oh, I know. Drip over it. Um, next up, Eddie, the people who live in like Indiana Ooh, or Wisconsin I, or something. He's my Eddie last week. Okay, guys, Corey, I could say I could tell you that Corey was a product. She got the sprinkle tray from the sprinkle factory. From the sprinkle factory, it has a magnetic portion on it, and busted out old Eddie and his tongue f- manual feed. Yeah, and these were last minute cookies. They were due the next day. Yeah, but Eddie's a direct to food printer. So now continue with this. Oh yeah, these direct to food printer. In if you had to think that this logo was probably a four part, definitely stencil. four colors, four colors: so white, black. Blue and brown, Two shades gold. Of blues. I know, right? Wow. So you would need four stencils to equal what Eddie did for me, but he's printing it all in one. Versus a stencil, you'd be like, and I'm doing blue, and I'm doing dark blue, and I'm doing gold. But just with the stencil, you gotta put the color in. You gotta spray it. You gotta buy the stencil. You gotta hope it works. You gotta, you gotta go gotta wipe clean this, it. Wash the stencil down. Dry yeah. it off. Use and it the time between that. So Eddie is a huge time saver. Somebody in the Eddie group the other day asked a really interesting question: How soon did you make your money back? And the answers were all over the map. From, I made it back in two and a half weeks. Imagine Sometimes one giant people order. people buy an Eddie for a giant order. Yeah, which is absolutely genius. What a risky click, but yeah. like genius. And then some people are like, I haven't opened it yet, so I haven't made the money back. So your results may vary. It will depend greatly on your marketing. Funnel. 
funnel. There you funnel. go. <laughs> uh, I will say the sprinkle tray made it fun to use that. Again. Did it make it funnel? <laughs> made it funnel. <laughs> <laughs> so the sprinkle tray, and you'll, there's the sassy there's tray, so sprinkle many tray, Milton tray. There's so many trays out there. They help. just had recommended the sprinkle yeah. tray. Yeah. They, doesn't she live in San She does. No fun. Her name's Tony. Did she ship it to you, like just throw it across the street? She did. I had to catch it. Minute, <laughs> Get it. <laughs> uh, what these trays do, it helps Eddie kind of center himself. And some of you guys be like, shouldn't he already do that? Eddie has been pushed to his box all bob. And uh, people were printing on everything. You know, when I was talking what? to Mike in the cookie college, he was watching my live stream of yes. the printer. And he was like, oh, go buy Milton. Does the M&M tray. Do you want me to print it? Yeah. This bad boy can print off anything. Let's try it. Would you print on an M? Yeah, I feel I mean, I'll mess up a few, but I'll print on whatever I can. Okay. Just to try. I need to get better with them. Yeah, and I could tell you were kind of excited by the results. I was excited about it. Someone was like in my video, like, it doesn't look centered. Yeah, but that wasn't my bad. (laughs) If you saw what I was working with before, you'd be like, wow, that's good. (laughs) Yeah. And then last but not least is Bakety Bakes Royal Batch Meringue Powder. Now, here's another question. Uh, Queer had posted to Mixing Bowl Cookie Company some letter of this fun, bright vibe. And then all of a sudden, somebody posted it in the Cookie College asking for a puff tutorial. Did you use Royal Batch? Please I say yes. That's a sponsor. Royal Batch. <laughs> I actually use Royal Batch. It's, it's so Did Royal Batch smooth. Is Royal Batch accountable for the coveted puff that they were talking about? Yes, it's definitely good for the puff. What you really want to achieve puff is less water in your icing. Mm. Water waters things down, so the more liquidy, the less crisp your lines are, the less puff you get. So oh. it takes a lot longer to make the cookies when you have more puff involved. If somebody wanted to go see what we're talking about, what's your handle? It is at Mixing Bowl Cookie Company. On? Instagram. Okay. Are you going to teach a class for the cookie college kids about it? I'm going to think. Wait, if I can recreate it. Weren't you it. supposed to teach something else that was a tutorial? Yes, listen. What was it? You got to Wait, know last minute orders. What was that? Galaxy what? stuff. Oh, yeah. You guys in the last minute order. Family is the worst. I am. I was family, just standing on the side of the road. <laughs> it's in my family. Like my husband's. Like my boss. Bosses wanted cookies. Okay, made them. My next door neighbor of three years ago said, "Really need my grandmother today." If it's not too much, my mom. mom. Last week, yeah. It was so insane. I just Ash. get. When did she? She always sneaks in there. She does, yeah. but she hasn't as of late. But she bought literally your Mother's Day gift. That was. Did I tell them that? I don't remember. Did we? I feel like. Did we you? did? I feel like you did. You did. Did I? I don't. We did talk about it. two people. I just don't remember who those people remember. were. If you just tune in for the first time, <laughs> I made this cute. What a wild place for you to start. <laughs> cookie bouquet for my mom for Mother's Day because you can only make so many MOMs before like she's had it every Mom's. year. Yeah. So I made this cookie bouquet. It was so cute. I did like the whole wrapping. You can actually find it on our Instagram. I made a whole reel about how I made it so you can follow the tutorial. I give it to my mom what, upon entering her house. And she's like, oh, my goodness, thank you so much. She's had a million of my cookies, so I know it wasn't, like, mind-boggling for her. And now she's $100 right now. What a what a wild pitch. And what I, an ethical dilemma. Yeah, I'm just – like, I, the gift has been gifted. My hands are out of it. And now she's $100. I have to go see mom my mother Mom riding you in there was generous. Oh, it was generous. My mom – I said, Mom, I'm going to be honest. My feelings will not be hurt. I'm a business person before I am a baker. Before I am your daughter. <laughs> If you want it, make some cashish. You know I'm going to So my mom cookies. says, I love them, Corey. Let's do halvesies. So the ethical, the morality the was morality. passed along. Yeah, so I ended up making 60 bucks off of it. Because my dad didn't have change. change. So, so mom, mom said, well, you 40. made it. Mom, do you, do you think she deserves a 60? No, because I got her another gift. Okay, fair, fair. I feel like we already talked about it. We this. did, and I feel like we said the exact same thing. I did. <laughs> it's really weird. Oh, about. one sponsor I want to include specific cook- Wow. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm just going to quit now. No, no, specifically because CookieCon tickets went on sale for Florida, you can turn CookieCon Florida into the adventure of a lifetime. Adventure of a lifetime. With Heather Campbell Brookshire, yes, the wife of the man who is working on the Corey server. <laughs> she is a Disney adult, and she can plan your entire trip for you free of cost. Granted, you do have to pay for CookieCon and your tickets and stuff, but the planning portion of it's free. And she has the inside scoop on like some haunted halloween thing it's epcot's like tasting around yes, the world we thing. loved epcot when epcot we is it Ep- they said epcot was disney for the adults literally. i wish i would have went there a tin bit more hungry we went and got the most amazing pizza though you know what, it was so uh, hot what outside. one of the ladies she's like oh we me it's my kid's birthday inside i actually live in orlando no she's coming to the happy hour but she was like you know like 
I, she's like, I'll go. I mean, we're going this weekend. We go every weekend. And I said, well, cool. Eat a turkey leg. And I said, she's like, do you want me to bring you a turkey leg <gasps> to Cookie <laughs> God, there's no way. I know. But she was like, yeah, we go every weekend because I guess you get a discount if you live in the state. Oh, wow. The way you get the season passes. I don't yeah. really know how it works. However, Heather Campbell Brookshire, you can search her name in any of the Facebook groups. She's there. Just channel her Disney magic. However, if you click on the event if you go to the events tab and you want to come to the happy hour, just some casual laid back thing, you can find all her information on how to contact her to get this planned out now, which you'd want to kind of do. Did you know? No. That if you hire a Disney planner, it's zero dollars. Queen, Queen, it just said that I you were on your it phone. Again. You were on your phone. I really was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that that auditory echo to the kitchen. Zero dollars. Oh, do you have any twin twists? Close it down. Do you have a twin twist? Uh, okay, so what we did, I'm sorry, I am still on 3D printer talk. Okay, I'm going to zone out. The, the Cookie College kids, I mean, this printer is $1,500. $1, I thought it'd be a good Vendi Blendy giveaway. Okay. Listen, we'll talk about, we'll talk about, we'll talk about it. it. But they say, can you stress test it? So I log on a thing of ours. Can break it? Stress test means make it print something big. Cookie cutters are pretty small. Okay. So I got this 18 egg carousel thing where you put I your eggs, eggs and they i have to make dough when i get home to my friends yeah can you <laughs> I have so it was a six hour print it was a two-part print i only did the first part and we printed it off i have i went to bed and i was watching the camera from my beddy bar blank to me <laughs> honestly if this is the man i've always watching, waited one in my life he's reliable he's consistent and he's warm and he works through the night <laughs> he has a job and he gets it done so that so we stress tested yesterday i did live stream the whole thing i just muted everything i said yeah, i was like texting other saying don't text me it's being live streamed <laughs> <laughs> yeah so and then Corey needed a 60 cookie yeah cutter. someone's it's, turning 60 Made 22 cookies, needed to make 24. Didn't want to go remake what I already made. So I said, can you print me a six and a zero? I said, what size do you need from top to bottom? Guys, tell me she if said four wrong. inches. I said four inches. So from top, the top of the six to the six bum hiney, it's four inches, which creates a ginormous yeah, cookie. Listen, guys, I even said to you, it will be Etsy, huge. When we order on Etsy and we say four inches, it's not the size I of my I think face. that's diagonally, which would shrink both the okay, length well, and width. you have got to do what the other people are I doing. I don't make clunky clunky. I don't know well, what do they're doing. Do some market research. Funnel yourself into someone's yeah, I want to see the giant 60. I want to <laughs> see it on your Instagram. I know. Heather's like, yeah, wet on. What does that mean? It's huge. Is someone that going to be wet on? <laughs> Cookie will be dried Science by the time it's The lit. top is going to be dry before I get to the bottom. I did. Like, was super. Like, clearly, the one she used Western writing. So you're never going to use a six Western and zero. Right. Also, it's huge. It's ginormous. So the I, guy's turning 60, but it's a big six now. <laughs> the big six out. So I make it 60. I know she's never going to use this cutter again. So I put a giant bridge between it. Yeah, but. So so there's a I bridge like, going from the Now stick. I have to roll the dough out so long <laughs> <laughs> to cut it. But, but that printer busted it out an hour. It came back it from did, lunch. It there did. was perfect print, perfect cut wall. Even made the printer really, I mean, the print really ugly myself. Like it was ugly. I forgot an entire cut wall. I know she did. She uh, but did. it'll it'll. She do. called it a one-time use. Way to serve the plant there. Sorry, Earth. <laughs> Uh, and sorry, printer, that you had to look at that. Twin twist is I have not been to Hobby Lobby in a hot minute. So I went to the Hobby Lobby yesterday, and they are redoing the whole place. If you go to the baking section, they now have paintable gold. Paintable but they have gold? it. You know how like I was doing the gold reviews, gold? and it's already pre mixed. Yeah, they've pre mixed gold, silver. Did you test? That? I I got the gold just to test it. But they have. I pink. got the gold! Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> they have green, pink, purple, all these sparkly colors. Really? So I'm going to have to test all it out. And they had cello bags, 150 in a pack, and you can just keep, and it's 5 by 11. So if you like to do bows at the top, that's what you want to mm. do that on. Was it cost competitive? Hobby Lobby is always cost Hobby Lobby is like, we're going to pay you <laughs> to come here. It wasn't a 50% off day, though. Oh, but they had rearranged yeah. the whole store. It was like I was rediscovering Which it for the first likes? time. No, the one by house. Yeah. Bridge. Oh, really? Yeah. They rearranged that big old the thing? The whole thing. The, the huh. paintings are now in the <gasps> back of the store. No, no, that's where Gams and I went. You must have been for a long time because Gams and I went yeah. to go to the paintings yes. in the back crev. Yeah. The crevasse. They still have like Fourth of July themed stuff at the front. Someone said the fall stuff is out. Can you confirm? Nor do not. Can confirm. They were still putting it out though, so uh, it wasn't full fledged. I'm going to be honest. I'm kind of ready for the fall. Screw the summer. I'm done. I'm done. I know we're not there yet, but I'm done. We have had a mild spring, summer, whatever this is right now. Usually it should be a lot sweltery. All right. Sweltery. Sweltery. When archers, oh, so a lot of people are finishing up 
school, school already. I think a lot of people are done. A done. lot of people You're done. are done. Archer finishes next week. If Prince, are the counties in here sw- finish the second week of June? Prince William is June 15th. Third week. So yeah, I think Loudon is second and Fairfax and Prince William are third week. Oh. Then yeah. we're in the summer, the big guys. Old summer the big high. old summer lull. Summer lull. The lull from making money. <laughs> <laughs> we can do our SU. <laughs> <laughs> All right.